everyone, welcome to No Movies in Hell. I'm Chris Geiger. I love Claw Scott, and today we are reviewing The Substance. Screenplay, best screenplay at uh, Camp Con. Okay. Yeah. High hopes for this movie to me, Margaret Qualley. Yes. Very promising looking um, body horror movie, um, which we know I'm not a huge horror fan, but this looked interesting. Yeah. Did you know much going into this film? I knew that somehow, like, Margaret Qualley was going to be the younger version of Demi. And okay. that the, somehow the substance was the thing that allowed that to be. But I, that was about it. What about you? Oh, I knew nothing going into this film. I just knew that there was something called the substance and that there were two individuals. I thought in my mind, like, oh, it was two two different people that may be impacted by the substance i had no idea i guess spoiler alert major spoiler alert for this movie that it was the same person ah this is such an interesting film i i love it from the perspective of it gave you a formula which i feel like a lot of horror movies like when i think about for example um and this is completely different film and different type of horror but like the psychological horror film don't worry darling Mm -hmm. and how they try to set up you know kind of like this thing happens and like and these people are in a simulation and stuff like that they didn't think about all of the parameters and i think this movie did a very good job of setting up this is exactly this is a formula this is exactly what you need to do and it was I thought it was pretty methodically thought out. Like, oh, wow, like you're getting fed. Nobody wants for that and like other things. And that I felt like this movie centered on not necessarily characters because you don't really get to know them. Um, It's very much like this formula of this is how it works. Um, It's very like an instructional guide and of course, you know, um, cautionary tale. I mean, it's not perfect. It is very flawed. But I just thought there's so many things. And I, I Demi Moore does this amazing oh, yeah. job. <laughs> like, I want to see her in more films. Um, I want to see her in more horror films. Like, this was completely shocking to me. I loved the setup. Like you said, I thought it was very well done. I did feel like it went completely off the rails at a certain point uh, <laughs> towards the end. Which, yes. Um, I think everyone who sees this might be able to agree that that happens. Maybe they would disagree on exactly when it happens. <laughs> but by the end, is definitely off the rails. I I felt like the characters didn't seem to really grasp the whole, like, you are one. Yes, <laughs> the, yes. Or Elizabeth character understood, yeah. but the Sue character didn't seem to understand even though i wasn't sure how like mentally connected they were yes yep but it seemed like if you you know if you truly were one that you would be mentally connected like she would have an understanding of how she came to be and what continued what would need to continue in order for her to continue to exist so the decision to pull a lot of the stabilizer out basically draining the source um, to the point of no return seemed very short term thinking. Yes. Yeah. I kept on thinking about how like this movie's great in terms of, I feel like it could be like, even though it's like we, you are one and there's balance and you are the matrix. It's like, there's no communication between them until like, the third act and it would have been just great to be like leave a post-it note or something right and these characters elizabeth was very isolated for such a successful person there was no family there was no friends it was very much like she was being talked to by a, a man who presumably was like older than her and telling her all these things about you know herself And then Sue, the same thing was like uh, just the appeasement of, you know, an older man. And uh, I don't know why, but like if you are 
you know, if you're questioning yourself as uh, an older woman, why would your younger self go back to or like doing the same thing? Um, it's like you could have done something else. And the guy who I, presumably is like his substance, young, his younger self is literally like a doctor or medical student or something like that. And then it's like, well, if Elizabeth had the time, she could just take up arts, crafts, hobbies, whatever. But instead she like is becoming a life source, but like she's not bettering herself. She just gets angry. And then she calls like, she doesn't even talk to herself. She literally talks to the people who give her these things and they don't tell you when you're supposed to stop. Like, I just felt like this movie, it was great. It was great. I loved it from the perspective of women not being happy with themselves, but then they dig themselves into like even worse situation <laughs> as seen by the third act. It's like, this is supposed to be a better you. It's like, what does Sue expect? Um, the unreal, hyper-realism or the hyper-commercialization expectation of individuals, um, whether you're young or you're older, but not the appreciation of the self, like listening to yourself, having that inner dialogue, and like pivoting your career. Elizabeth could have pivoted to QVC or something. She didn't have to like do just fitness. I thought it spoke a lot to society, but also I, I just love the fact that it was just kind of like, Hey, there's this thing and you can take it and it'll be a better version of you. And it's like, well, how do you know that? And that's when the, the thing happens. And, and it's like, it takes people so long to figure out, like, I don't, I don't know. That was like the funniest part. It's like, what did you, <laughs> did you think that by wearing a picture that that was going to be, that was going to be sufficient? Right. <laughs> part of it did remind me of to tame mm, where, okay. because it was so off the rails at the end that it was just like, what am I even watching right now? When Elizabeth is in her like oldest self. And she's, you know, like, uh, theoret up to this point in the story, everything that Sue is doing to deplete her has this, a like, rapid aging effect on her. So, physically, she looks much older, but you would think that it would come with the same infirmities and actual, like, inabilities to move. But, man, she's booking it down that hallway. <laughs> And you're just like, how is she moving that quickly? How is she dragging this giant picture? How is she? You've asked me to suspend disbelief that this this person has aged thirty to thirty five years overnight. Basically, you can't step, pull me back now and say like, but she's still running this fast. <laughs> like, yeah, she was she struggling to even her like way. move her leg right. the first time, and now it's like she's pulling pictures. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is kind of like that. Six Flags a commercial with the old man that's dancing around. Right. Like it it's too hard to take us that quickly into that much disbelief. Like it becomes a, a fairy tale at that point. Yeah. Which to Tane is a fairy tale and also did very well at Khan. So I feel like that they like that. And yeah. That, that okay. It just like goes off the rails. Yeah. Let's go to the slides. Wow, I'm shocked that my our our uh, our ratings are pretty close. Yeah. So acting, I'm a little bit higher than you, but cinematography, you're a little bit higher than me. So mm -hmm. that balances it out. Costumes, hair and makeup. I thought the hair and makeup was amazing when she aged. Like when you see her foot. Like, oh, yeah. That was so impressive to me. And I felt, I kind of felt like this after the, what was the Bigfoot movie that came out? Oh, really um, came? uh, yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. The Bigfoot. I'll think of it and put it down in the thing. But I did, when she was in the 
like the full body mm-hmm. older version. I did have the same feeling like that the body, the body parts don't move the way actual flesh would move. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought like the finger on her hand, like that yeah. was really impressive makeup uh, and prosthetics. And when she was like half older, like that was very good. I And the hair, I thought, I just thought they did a very good job of aging her. Yeah. And the monster. Well, I I guess I put that in like special effects. Okay. I thought the special effects were just incredible. Even to the monster at the end. It mm-hmm. was like, it had everything. <laughs> Quite literally. It was like, I just, it, it's just so funny that, you know, the whole th- thing was, you know, Sue trying to be her best self. And it ended up there. <laughs> this is what happened. Right. Well, that also made me, it, I mean, just another sort of hole in it. There's a, at the beginning, there's a maid. Yes. Who is vacuuming after Elizabeth has her meltdown and throws her snow globe. But there doesn't seem to be a maid after that. Like, I don't know what happens to her. Yeah. Like, it's very isolating. That was only, that was one of the few people uh, and other women that she spoke to, Elizabeth spoke to. Sue, you know, it was just like the background people in the, in the videos and just Dennis Quaid's character in the shareholder holders at some point. But like, there is literally like no one that Elizabeth fraternizes with at all. She wears the same clothes, like the same mustard yellow coat. Um, I, I'd be hard pressed. Like I'd be so impressed if Halloween people are out and about with like the big glasses, the, the mustard coat. Um, but I digress. I go back to the special effects of, you know, seeing these characters age. But, you know, I found what was interesting is like, well, I guess it does show up in some way that like nothing really happens to Sue. Like when you, when she thought about something happening on camera it ended up not being anything, but she really didn't get any of the repercussions, even though they are one. Right. She didn't get any repercussions until she tried to take the, um, was like an enhancer of some sort, whatever made her into the monster. Yeah, the activator. So she tried to reuse what was left in the activator, original activator, which was single use. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which that, like, I'm just going back to the maid again. So either she fired her maid before she did the activator, because like you're taking this thing, you don't know what it's going to do to you. You don't know what. So she's laying on the floor for seven days. Like, yeah. the, like basically the carcass. Of Elizabeth is laying on the floor for seven days in the bathroom. Yeah. And the maid must not be around it. Like, but so she had the foresight to fire her maid before <laughs> she did that. Otherwise, someone would have come in to see her laying on the floor. Yeah. Or maybe she just gets cleaning out twice a year. I don't also, Sue, how does she build like a a back? entryway into her her bathroom like how did she do that well and also apparently she lives in an apartment building with people yes. who are just normal people but yeah. she has this amazing apartment that was funny i did think that a lot some of the scenes reminded me of like almodovar like how mm-hmm. he uses color like the hallway of the studio and the fact that she wore that yellow that bright yellow jacket or coat all the time. Yep. Uh, and Sue was always in that pink leotard. Like that was very like, yeah, uh, Pedro a lot of her to me. Yeah, very poppy in color. I, I for a second, I was first. I don't know until the neighbor showed up. I thought that she lived alone in the hills, and then it was like, wait, she has a neighbor. <laughs> But like, how do you have an apartment like be, that? Well, and he doesn't seem to be like anyone who makes as much money as she does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it would be as if Taylor Swift had an apartment across the hall from me. Like she yeah. doesn't. You'd have paparazzi outside. You'd have like people waiting for signatures. You'd have fandom. There's no fandom here. 
Like, like there's so many disjointed things that I understand, like maybe it's culturally different because the the director is a French woman. Um, but also the dialogue wasn't that great, um, which I understand. Uh, but I still think that like it being very regimented in terms of you 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 can only it's a one use only you have to come to this like shady side of the tracks to like you know get the stuff you know uh, elizabeth sees you know someone from high school and and he wants to reconnect with her you know she is on national television you know whatever she just dismisses him um uh, but yeah, there's like not any more, you know, there's, yeah, it's very isolating. Yeah. Do you have anything to plug in this episode? Well, looking forward to the fall movie season as it starts to kick off. So I still need to see my old ass. Megalopolis is coming. Um, Curious to see what else is is going to pop in terms of indie films um mm-hmm. with with the film festivals coming out very soon yes isn't there a new i want to say there's a new almond of our movie coming out yes yes with um julianne moore right and oh. uh tilda swinton yes yes that looks interesting mm-hmm Oh, also, Nosferatu, I'm seeing that uh, oh, yes. trailer more and more, which I'm excited about. But also, I know that I'm going to see it for the next three months, so I'm less <laughs> excited about that. Uh, Wait, it's a December movie. Yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty so, good. Three months of trailers. Kind of like See No Evil. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but at least that one's gone. Like, we're we're past that now. Hopefully, the trailer part of it anyway. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.